I bid you good day and welcome you to another time, to another moment of our choosing to gather for mutual benefit. For I assure you that as significant as these moments may be to you, they are equally significant to Gaia. These are not simply moments in which Gaia passes along interesting tidbits of information to stimulate or tantalize your day or your awareness, though indeed they do so. Each one of the topics, the subjects that we bring forward, is hand-selected either by you or by Gaia's awareness, which is another version of you. They are topics that are timely. They are important to your awareness. They are important to your development, to the aspects of you that are you and are still becoming you. When we share these moments, in essence, the information, particularly if it is new to you, takes a different path in the brain. It cuts a different course within you. It gives the opportunity to the awareness to consider the thought and consider where to place it. Imagine that you order a very fine piece of furniture and have it delivered, but until it actually arrives, you are not certain where you will place it. Perhaps you will try it here, perhaps you will try it there. Here because the color, there because there is more sunlight. And most of the time, the last thing that you want to do is put it exactly where the old one was. Particularly for that reason. Because you are ready to reinvent the moment or the day or the subject. Every part of you is aware of your desire to want to invent and reinvent yourself. And so your thoughts begin to adjust themselves, make room for themselves. And even as you receive another issue of our time together, your thoughts begin to anticipate and to direct what it might be, where it might go, and how it could share itself to your benefit. So it is a fine time for us to share together and as we gather to consider another new thought, this time I direct your awareness to the skies. At other times I have pointed to the earth and we have wondered as to how solid the ground beneath you might be, how stable. This time I say to you, even as you are keeping your feet firmly on the ground, I ask for you to gaze up at the sky, up to the stars, but with a different awareness, with a new awareness. Not as if you were seeing it for the very first time, but as you are gazing upon it, to look at it in a way in which you expect to find something different something that may have shifted, something that has a slight different position, a slight different color, something that is enhanced in its magnitude, in its size, or something that has receded from view. I ask you to look to the very color of the night sky and even of that at a particular time that we will simply call pre-dawn, if possible. The sky is a little bit different now. It is different particularly because the earth is already a little bit different now. Now, of course, it would be much easier if you could take a stance somewhere into space and from there view the earth. But since you cannot, we will do the opposite. You will stand upon the earth and you will look to the sky. 
and as you begin to see the skies shift, then you may say to yourself, well, if the sky is different, then perhaps the earth, my earth, my life, may be a little bit different now as well. And so what is changing about the sky? Well, in essence, the quality by which you see the stars is a little bit different now. Why? Because in order for you to see the stars as you do, you see them through the very many filters of dust, atmospheric dust, and the very light that surrounds the earth. Well, that has began to change. And so as you see the earth's atmosphere, there is a little bit more dust but it is gathered together in certain clouds now. It is not as dispersed as it once was. There are areas that draw to themselves a little bit more atmospheric dust, and there are areas that are a little bit more clear now. There are reasons for this as well. It has to do with the elements of the earth, the heating in some areas, cooling on other areas. The earth is emitting certain energies that either gather or disperse this dust. This allows for more clarity again in certain areas and even at certain times and less at others. And this anomaly will continue for some time. If you gaze at certain areas that are clearer than others, the stars will take on a little bit different appearance. They will shine a little bit more, sparkle a little bit more, and they will appear to dance before you just a little bit more. A little more than what you would consider the twinkling of the stars. And they will appear in different color, in different size, and different magnitude again more often. This will lead to the discovery of certain more planets and stars and other celestial bodies than have been discovered at some time. More of these will be by your amateur astronomers with very simple telescopes. Because again, with clarity, there is much more that is visible to the naked eye and under lower power than has been true before. You will begin to see other colors in the sky as well. Not simply the whites and pinkish reds. You will begin to see a slight green glow here and there surrounding a body, surrounding a star. At first you will think it is your eyes fooling you, but it is so. There is an energy that is attracting some of these objects to the earth. And that is what we begin to speak of. The earth is literally beginning to attract to itself more objects, more celestial objects than at other times. The very energy that the earth is able to emit is doing this. And of course to those races of beings that are more aware than others, they have their own reasons for being more attracted to the earth at this time. And we will speak of that by and by. The earth then emitting an energy that sounds, sounds vibrationally a little bit like a combination between an invitation and an SOS distress call energetically that is what it would sound like imagine both imagine something that sounds both as a sweet and delightful carefully crafted wedding invitation at the same time sounding a little bit like a distress call well perhaps there is a bit of humor in that too but now that is what the vibration truly sounds like because there are aspects of the earth that while they do not consider themselves in distress, they are sufficiently in chaos, 
sufficiently in upheaval, sufficiently in movement, that the energy that is displaced by them sounds distressed. If, for instance, we were to take all of the thoughts and feelings of all of the humanity that has been displaced by the recent earthquakes, if all of that were turned not into human voices but into an actual vibrational energy, it would sound like a distress call, you see? At the same time, the earth begins to feel, in essence, truly magnificent vibrationally magnificent because there is a recognition within much of it that it is not simply change that is upon it but true change the kind of change that nature brings only before there is great evolution and movement and as you have seen the earth only does this every quite so often and so it is truly something to look forward to the events of the earth shifting another dimension is truly something vibrationally magnificent and so this message is broadcast as well from the earth and everything that is capable of perceiving vibrations and frequencies understands what is taking place and so that invitation sends at first a message and then a call and then an invitation a little bit like what you have called a clarion call a clarion call is that which makes certain that everything and every one capable of even considering receives the message so you would not say to that oh I didn't get the memo I didn't get the email or it went into my junk or my spam folder you would not say that where a clarion call is concerned it would reach you you would be touched by it you would become aware of it and whether or not you chose to participate or to be drawn by it would then be of your choosing. But it would not be that you had been overlooked in the process. Now the same is taking place for humanity upon the earth. Humanity as well. Some are being shaken. Others are being dreamed into awakeness. Others are being startled. Others are being painted with a different brush, learning another language, another career, another family, a different view of life. And so upon the earth, the clarion call is also sounding, and all are becoming aware of it. So what is taking place in the skies above the earth is very similar but different than what is taking place upon and within the earth. Now back to the skies. This message, this vibration that is being broadcast has been at least felt now by near and far regions alike. And one of the ways that the earth sends this vibration is via the very wobble of the earth's axis even the slightest anomaly is a message that is sent the slightest movement the slightest recalibration is sent throughout the entire galaxy so in essence it matters not that the little wobble of the earth does not affect your day or does not affect your clocks look here it has affected and continues to the entire galaxy and once that vibration has gone out then there is the response a little bit like an echo brings its own response a boomerang brings the return 
of that which has been sent. And so the earth has sent out invitations in a manner of speaking. Invitations for those that wish to assist, participate, view, or in any way. See the earth become what it is becoming, just as you have at other times in different moments also gone to see or to be a part of other worlds for your own particular reasons. Now then, as the earth continues to evolve and send the messages, it begins to attract, as we have said. And what will it attract then? As you begin to see the sky look and clear and notice a little bit difference in the stars and a little bit differences, well, in essence, the earth is becoming more magnetic than it has been before. More magnetic. This means that it will attract thought and feeling and object alike. And so nearer to the earth than at other times there will be the approach of asteroids. This you will not hear of immediately but you will hear more and more as time continues that this asteroid had been discovered or one that had been truly in a different course altogether has now moved or shifted its course and appears to be coming nearer to the earth than at other times and small ones as well small meteors and such there will be more increase in meteoric showers to the earth as well those that are timed in coincidence with the seasons and the nature of the earth these will be a little bit more intense for the next several seasons and of course there are many that will not land upon the earth necessarily but you will see more of these anomalies in the sky fire in the sky you will see more stars light up. When these moments are recorded, as they will be by certain telescopes and other technology, in those frames, in those pictures, there will be, if one is careful to look and to see, certain other anomalies of the sky as well. For instance, if they are looked at, just right or just under that circumstance or just by that angle or under the other light visible there in the background will be well what you could term a ship in one case what you might term an outline of something that in some way is recognizable and of course you will say well it is simply an anomaly of the capture. It is a digital anomaly. Or you would say, well certainly someone has doctored that one already. Simply it has been manipulated by the computer. And while that may be the case with some of them, it will not be the case with all of them. And so visible in your skies, if not by the naked eye, and not by the near telescope, then in a digital production or reproduction, you will begin to see that in essence, just as you have always known, you are not quite alone. And the skies are indeed beginning to fill up with visitors, and in some cases, some of these will be recognizable in some way. Now you will not see ships in the way that you imagine that you would see them. And so this you must erase from your mind. You will not see what you would think in terms of your science fiction movies or the way that you would imagine a ship to be. And so leave your mind open in this regard. But what if something did appear ship-like? It appeared to be such an anomaly that it simply looked out of place or out of time in that particular frame. You will begin to see that there are more of these, for there is not one particular way to make a vessel. 
There are many different, depending on whether they have come from, well, an inner space or an outer space, or depending upon whether it is piloted or not piloted. So truly you will begin to know that the skies are a little bit more unfiltered. And your eyes will know of this. This will spawn a great deal of inquiry and a great deal of curiosity. Much of it will be written away, as it always is, but not all of it. Not all of it. In the way that most of your objects, UFO objects, are written away or written off, but not all of them, because some of them remain unexplained. In that same way, not all of this will be able to be written away or dismissed. And so there will be study and curiosity and there will be answers and there will be questions and there will be conjecture and that is where it begins. That is where you begin now to look to the skies, to look to that which will come from the skies and that which has always come from the skies and your eyes will be turned there forevermore. Forevermore. Although your interest will remain upon the earth and upon what you are doing and being upon the earth, once the skies have changed in that way, well, they will be changed forever, you see? And so that is our subject. Our subject is the changing sky. And because of the changing sky, the changing humanity, the evolution of humanity, the evolution of the earth, and all that is coming. Once these anomalies begin to be found or photographed in some way, there will be more. Imagine long and longer ago when the first crop circle was discovered. It was only the beginning, and then there were more, and then there were more. And so it will be a little like that. Once the first anomalies are discovered, there will be others, and then this kind, and then that kind, and then there will be more. As humanity becomes accustomed to them in some strange way, you will become accustomed to the skies containing more than just stars as you look upon them. And as you begin to become accustomed to that idea, then you will find more and then more. Imagine that you are looking for seashells in the sand, and at first you do not find, and then you find one, and then you find another. Now you have trained your eyes on what the sand or the sea might produce, and now you are on the lookout until you have a bucket full. It is the same way here. Once you begin to recognize this area of the sky or that particular time of night, then objects, instruments that are more sensitive will be brought forward and there will be more to be seen and more to be photographed. That is for certain. And so as these anomalies become then not entirely a regular, average part of a human cycle, but something that is present, then you will begin to see it come forward in color, in vibration, then it will be enhanced. And in essence, what you will begin to see are what we will call now sky circles or crop circles of the sky. They will be unique designs, geometries, geometries of light. Some of them will be formed literally by the atmospheric dust that is magnetically rearranged in certain ways to create patterns and designs very similar to those that you have upon the earth, very similar to the crop circles. And so as these are arranged in one way and then in another, they will be looked upon and there will be more. Who and what is creating these? We will leave that subject a little bit for now. For now it is enough to bring forward 
that that which is upon the earth and recognized upon the earth and still unexplained upon the earth has its own counterpart in the sky. And so look to objects, look to something that could appear to be aligned as a ship or an anomaly that could be perceived as that, crop circles in the skies as well. As this begins to change humanity's thoughts, they will be directed more again to your origins in the skies. For after all, who would come calling to the earth if it was not something or someone or some being that knew the earth? Perhaps knew it before you did? Perhaps knew you before? And so here will come curiosities. Certainly this will bring about certain fears as well. And that is a little bit dangerous. Because you see, as there are some that wish to explain away as quickly as possible what it is, the explanation would not necessarily want to be that it is an anomaly from another being or another time of another world. And so it is much easier to explain it by saying it is this that has been tested or fired from this country or from another country. It will be blamed upon others. And there is a danger in that as well because many of the countries of the earth are already a little bit on the trigger, it could be said. Now those that do put forth these essences in the sky of course you might know that this is not their goal not their idea of earth play and so they will be doing everything that is in their ability everything in their ability to make certain that those with hair trigger fingers do not use those fingers at such moments certainly not to be inspired by a message of welcome or introduction that comes from the sky yet I give these to you for it is all part of the scene that is being laid out and that is part of your near future as well to this time to the earth at this time come a variety of different beings, a variety of different ideas. Some of these have come from your past, some of these have come from your future, some of these have come from both because you have sent for them. That may be a little bit of a surprise for you. That which you do not know and would not recognize is something that at the same time you have sent for. You sent for it, you sent for them. You wish to have it present. You wish to have it awareness. You wish to have it recorded. You wish to be assisted. You do not wish to be alone. You wish to be reminded. You wish to be inspired. For all of these reasons, you have sent for or drawn to you, both individually and collectively, other essences, other truths, other reminders to be present with you. In case they are needed, or if you should choose to return, again, there are many, many reasons. And again, the subject is what is taking place in the skies. And here again we begin to say that the skies are filled. They are filled not only with all that we have described thus far, but with your essences, with your friends. Imagine that your souls that know you very, very well come closer, come nearer, bringing with them everything that you hold dear, everything that is familiar to you, everything that you might need, everything that is resourceful. 
everything that you have called upon or thought necessary of long ago. And so again, the skies are filling. Some of those that come near the earth now are called watchers. Watchers. And watchers, as the name implies, are those, it is a collective, it is a collective consciousness of that which oversees when there is great change. Not necessarily upheaval, not necessarily evolution, but even when something is turning inside out, that is true change. And when that change is evoked, the watchers come. Those who watch are also able to create worlds. And they watch great change in a world that is already created because it is a creative thing to do. Because it stimulates all of the worlds when they do so. When the watchers watch the evolution or creativity that is taking place upon one world, somehow, and by a willingness, by their will, all of the worlds shift in some way. All of the worlds grow in some way. Imagine that you are in your garden, and there you are pruning a tree, and all of the trees in that garden now follow that creativity and consider themselves pruned even if they are not because they are stimulated by all that takes place in the same garden. And so the watchers do much more than watch but you would not see that happening. It is not that they first watch and then go and do elsewhere. It all takes place in the moment as they are watching all that they are creating, all that they are making, for they are makers of worlds, begins to shift just by their watching. And longer ago, that is one of the ways that the earth came into evolution itself. Because I, as Gaia, was able to see through the watcher's eyes to what another world was doing, how another world was giving sanctuary to beings of great light, how another world had offered protection, had offered source and resource, had offered wellness and more. And all of that became part of Gaia's awareness. And the moment it became part of Gaia's awareness, it also became part of the earth. And while the resources were different and the timing was different and the very life upon the earth was different because of what the watchers saw, I am, Gaia is, and you are as well. So these are the watchers. Now, similar to the watchers, but not exactly, are what we could call witnesses. The witnesses you would not necessarily see. They would be invisible to your thoughts. They would be invisible in every way to you. They do not wish to be seen. They cannot be seen. You cannot perceive them. But I tell you that they are present. A silent witness is a little bit like something that is pure observation. It sees because it sees. It knows and it sees and it knows and it sees. It is like a great recorder of time or a great recorder of energy. It witnesses growth. It does not seek to understand it or explain it or deliver it or offer it to others. So what is the purpose? What is the purpose of a witness? Well, in all things there is a time and place for everything. And there will be a time and a place where you will forget. You will forget everything or almost everything that you ever knew or ever thought of. Either because it is less important or because your attention is turned elsewhere. 
just as now your memories for instance you can recall this and you can recall that but some things just elude you try as you might you cannot remember all things it is almost as if you were not really there or it did not really happen well that which is the witness records all things so that in some way it happened so that in some way history that buries and forgets and ignores and rewrites cannot do so completely and so the energy of the witness records in ultimate accuracy every particle of energy becomes data becomes memory that it can be seen from 360 degrees from inside out in every capacity and so the witness is here as well the skies are also filled with travelers travelers those that have come from far away to witness and in some ways participate to view to transmit all that is taking place upon the earth some will be so bold as to walk upon the earth and walk among you others will not others through their own capacity can experience much but not all of what is taking place upon the earth in their own way they have traveled many of these dimensionally interdimensionally and in a variety of other capacities transdimensionally a little bit different mode in order to share the earth in ways with you and in ways that are of importance to them for many of these travelers long ago were part of the earth in a different time in a different way in a different place they had a different understanding of the purpose of the earth and used it in their own ways they had another idea of the resources that the earth had to offer and what they might do or whom they might be for or how they might be transported they have also been waiting for the evolution of the earth they have been waiting for other resources both within you and within the earth to begin to release to begin to demonstrate themselves and they have timed themselves accordingly if you were to travel upon the earth in order to see the northern lights at a time in which they are particularly prominent you would be there to record that benefit but perhaps also there may be other benefits than just viewing them that others may be aware of and that you are not and so those that have traveled see the earth in many different ways than you do they do not simply see it as the mother earth as you do that gives life or sustains different species they see it in a complete different way as you see other planets you have a different understanding of them now you look at jupiter and say there is a gas giant that at this time is completely incapable of sustaining life of course that is not true it is simply that you do not understand the kind of life that it gives and sustains and offers such a great great planet has much to offer and is not there simply in space for no other purpose at this time and so now is a time of understanding all that is in the sky again i tell you that some have come from the past and others from the future some are here to assist humanity in constructing a newer web of life one that functions a little bit better one that is a little bit stronger and less fragile one that can bypass some of the systems that are prevalent upon the earth now that begins to crumble in its own way others have come from the past they come from the past as well to observe but more than that in their own way to assist as well who more than those that have come from the past would know what does not serve what did not work what will not work again 
because it did not work last time. And so many of those and that which comes from the past is here to assist humanity. How will it do this? For the most part by inspiring thoughts, by placing new patterns where they can be discovered upon the earth. Imagine that you lay a very specific formula or thought just near to where the old one is, just near enough that those that are destined to find the old one instead also see the new one side by side. And imagine that those that find the new one are wise enough to at least consider it, consider the thought. Is it a viable thought? Perhaps. Is it a little bit far-fetched? Yes. Will it work? Maybe. Will they listen to me? Maybe. And so those that come from the past then bring a different weaving. They have spent a great deal of time weaving a different outcome, weaving different thoughts, repairing what went wrong in order to bring it forward again. If you think about some of your past lives, it is not much different than that. Why would you return to consider the very same thought the next time? Well, you do not wish to consider the very same thought, but you wish to consider the same subject differently. You wish to look somewhere else, speak in a different tone, or offer yourself in a different way. And so they come. Thoughts come. Ideas come. And so you will begin to see again invention, thought. Some of it will work, some of it will not. Some of it is a bit premature still, but the ideas, you will see that humanity will begin to think new thoughts, at least some of it. The words that we share today do not apply to all beings. They do not apply to all humans. But they do apply to enough of a segment, enough of awareness in order to bring about change. You do not need to change every mind or steer every heart to look in one direction. You do not need to have agreement of all. In fact, a small percentage will do. But that small percentage must be enough, in essence, to weave themselves together, to be of one mind, one strong, new mind. And that is why it is important for you to look to the skies, for you to see these anomalies. Because the moment you see them, matters not if you believe in them or not, you will begin to change. What you are made of will begin to re-fabric itself, to make of itself a finer fabric. Your thoughts will begin to take a different path. Your pulse will begin to vibrate just a little bit different. And the very laws, the very electromagnetic laws that govern what you are and how you go about your life will also begin to change. The planets, part of the solar system, my family, is all quite aware of this. Aware and awake and resolved. Resolved in the way that a family resolves to move elsewhere if it must. To move or to shift. For all that is upon and near the earth now is shifting. The entire solar system matter fact is aligning itself just a little bit differently moving about caring for itself and aligning with a little bit different vibration a little bit different light and as all this begins to shift then there are certain anomalies that will be found on the other planets as well a slight shift in the rotation the very slightest shift in their tilt and this will then inspire the earth to continue to do the same. 
while the earth is changing the sky is changing and as the sky begins to change and to fill the earth will continue to change to shift a little bit yes there will continue to be earth movements earth tremors yes there will continue to be volcanic movements as well because that which is stimulating the skies has more to do with the magnetics of both sun and moon the very process the very law of attraction as you call it also draws attracts to the earth change and movement and so from the skies as you watch the skies you will see a different shade of blue at times yes the midnight color blue at other times a little bit lighter as if there is a glow upon the horizon that you could not quite express its quality but it had a quality that is a little bit unique a little bit different the quality of the moon as you gaze upon it as well even the moon will appear to be a little bit different in color some days a little bit too white as if someone had painted it with a brush a silvery white brush at other times it will appear to be even dirtier as if there were a storm passing by there and now it was a darker color beige the same anomalies will be true of the sun at times the sun will be quite quite brighter white yellow bright white light and at other times as well it will be observably a little bit darker and you see you will begin to see that there are others that will speak of the sun and of the darkness of the sky and of certain days of darkness it is too soon for that my companions it is too soon for that and so as you begin to hear those that offer one prophecy or another simply say to yourself not yet it is too soon all that is taking place is of my calling is for my benefit is by my invitation and is for my participation and then extend yourself to it it is my family come calling it is part of the greatness that i also am this too is what i am do not look to it and say to yourself it is something that is very foreign to me it is something that is very strange is it different yes it is different but do not make it something that is so foreign so uniquely strange that you become fearful of it for as you may already know fear is the great destroyer of creativity and it would be the pity were that to be so it is time now as always for the most open of minds the most open of hearts and to resolve that this is the great time and the great place it is time for self discovery self discovery and your self what you are is much more than the human self that wonders about the sky and the stars and the planets what you are is not only a great being but a great truth within you there is a great warrior of spirit a great upholder of great and universal laws a great visionary and seer a hopeless romantic that sees the earth and the heavens as one great poem of light within you there is one that knows all of the philosophies that have ever been put forward this is the truth that you stand in now so now is no time to stand upon a pedestal and proclaim to others what you have learned or what you know or to hold fast to any teacher or teaching now is the time to look and to marvel 
and then to continue on choosing the next moment as one that is full as creative as inventive the next moment and the next day as one that gives you the will and the freedom with which to participate to teach to share others to inspire to go forward to look within and here and there to poke your head into places and subjects that you know nothing about simply for the curiosity of it so sweet ones to the skies to the skies turn upward at every opportunity at every evening if you can look to the skies in hope of seeing something welcome your family and welcome yourself to that great galactic family of which you are part as always you will be dwelling in some way upon the earth in some way within Gaia's heart but it is time now to turn your gaze upward to the night skies and I give you more than the earth or for your benefit I will draw to the earth more I will draw down the skies and offer them to you here upon the earth remember that I have said to you that their earth is full of all that you need all of the truths and all of the resources and remember as well that I have said to you that if you wish to discover your true history you must look to the skies to the stars and to other worlds so here at our closing then I offer to you that a future that is bright and a history that is equally as bright that their origin and their destination is one and the same until the next moment brings us together I bid you good day <laughs>